and welcome to Chocolate Games Match Period. West Ham United against Newcastle United at the London Stadium, 2 p.m. kickoff on Sunday afternoon. Gonzo, kick us off with your thoughts on Newcastle, please. Yeah, a little shaky start to the season for um, ridiculous calls, may I say. No, I don't think by the Newcastle fans, I'm going to suggest that. But there were, you know, some people must have heard a few people suggested that maybe uh, Eddie Howe uh, might be replaced at Newcastle. I think it was good for him to hear. It wasn't Amanda Staveley, whatever, whoever her boss is, came out and said, no, that that's just not happening. And, and, and rightly so. Um, rightly so. I, I love Eddie Howe, I have to say. I, I really, really do. Um, I mean, the biggest thing you say about Eddie Howe is look at the re reception he got at Bournemouth last season. Um, or maybe it was Bournemouth fans that went to St James Park. I don't know. Um, they clapped him. They loved him. He was crying. Um, he's a great guy. He, he's a really... Good ambassador. I think it was well. First, he's a great ambassador for Newcastle. By the way, really, really good ambassador. Got a lot of negative press for obvious reasons because of the takeover, and then he, there he is, that that guy, humble, um, and and you know has has taken on the um, has taken on I think the face of Newcastle actually, and and what it, but what it does in terms of an English manager getting a job at a a high profile club even if they're not quite there in terms of man united or whatever yet but a high profile club and a club that with money i think is really 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 important for for english managers and for younger coaches coming through in the lower leagues they can look at him and they think oh yeah you know that, that's now there's there's a guy that we can follow so um yeah I, I think he's he's a major he's a major part of things and i think he's a, just an incredibly likable guy yeah i think newcastle or Newcastle are an incredibly likable club at the minute, as well as the fan base as well. Now, obviously, this is away from the owners. I'm not talking about the owners. I don't know enough about Saudi Arabia. I'm staying away from it. I know human rights is not good. That What they do over there is not good. It's not right. But that doesn't mean that Newcastle fans agree with it either. They just support Newcastle United, and that is it. And to speak about Newcastle United, the football club. And I think they're really likable. I found myself rooting for them on Wednesday, actually, Gonzo, when they played PSG, you know, I've told you before, when English clubs play in European football, I'm not bothered at all. Whether they win or lose, I'm not arsed. It doesn't bother me. I'll watch it, but I don't find myself hoping they win, but I also don't find myself hoping they lose. I'm really not bothered. I just want to watch the game of football. But on Wednesday, I found myself really wanted Newcastle to win, so much so that when they scored, I was actually a little bit like, get in there, like, good for you kind of thing. And I've seen all the build-up to... Champions League returning this week at what they were doing at St. James's Park with the drones and the atmosphere building and stuff like that. And it's some sp such a special occasion. And I just thought, in this day and age of football, now they've obviously spent a lot of money. I'm not going to play this down. They've spent well, they've spent over 300 million. It's not like they're poor while the takeovers happen. No, they've spent as much money as I thought they would. They haven't pissed it up the wall like I was hoping they would because as a West Ham fan I was hoping to some extent they would get it wrong and they wouldn't go into that upper echelons of the Premier League because it's already a closed shot with that six and now there's seven of them now so there's less spaces almost for West Ham to compete with um, what they've done is they've spent the money incredibly well but I did enjoy the romance of seeing Longstaff score, Dan Byrne score, Almiron, who was you know not great prior to Eddie Howe, he's he scored, and there was just something quite romantic about it actually. And then Lascelles was playing next to Shar at centre back against the likes of Mbappe and Mwani, and I thought there was something about it that, for all the money and for what you can buy in football, I thought that was almost something you can't buy to some extent. The fact that your academy players is playing against PSG and playing them off the park as well to some extent, and a 4-1 win, and I just thought it was a fantastic occasion for Newcastle, but also English football, actually. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. This season, had a bit of a slow start to some extent, but you, you can see them getting up and running now, and I've got no doubt they're going to go on and have a good season. But that's what I wanted to ask you, actually, Gonzo. What do you think they can achieve this season? <clears throat> um, well, what they can achieve, what they will will achieve, uh, um, what they probably want to achieve in terms of the ambition are probably three different things. I just want to go back on to what you were saying about PSG, because I, I didn't watch the game, but then obviously I was made very, very aware of what happened. You and I had a conversation about it, and and you know I know this video is coming up, and we're going we're gonna to play against them at the weekend, so I thought I'd, I'd have a little look. Um there was something very evident to me in that. I think it's really important. And I, I'll tell you why, because I know you didn't want to discuss the money, but I, I will. You, you, yeah, you basically had two oil states in terms of the ownership playing each other there. 
it's really important to remember that PSG had a history before all this oil money came in. They, they've had a, they had a rich history, history and um, um, they, they were a big club and they were a serious club. Um, you know, uh, the, the, the pride of Paris, very much so. What I saw in that game, and particularly the bits before it and afterwards, I think Paris Saint-Germain have lost their soul. And I think Newcastle still have their soul. And I think actually it's something that you can see if you look at Manchester City. I think Manchester City still have their soul. My, my point is, I think you can get big money in at clubs. And you say about you can't buy that. Um, and I know you meant about Sean Locke stuff. You can pump so many, so much money in and bring so many stars in and remove the club so much to become a super club that you stop being the heart of the city and what you previously stood for, that the club loses their soul. And I looked at Paris and I saw a load of players that didn't want to play for them. I saw a load of players that didn't represent them. I'm not sure how many Parisians were in that were in that team. And I looked at that and I looked what was happening. Well, you've got Geordies there. And, um, and I don't feel that they've come in, the Saudis, and swamped Newcastle and erased the identity. I looked at Paris. I think that might well have happened there. I don't know enough about it, but that's what I saw. A club with soul and a club without soul. And that's that's my point of what I saw there. Um it's, it's a tough balance when you bring that money and you you wanna you wanna try and you wanna try and keep it. And you know I certainly know at West Ham that my the, the, the song I hate least that opposition fans sing at us is you're not West Ham anymore. And it's it's really important that um, because it's it's not true. We might have moved stadium, but you know, you you, you know, you only got to see our fans at, um, at away grounds, as, in particular, as well. We're very much still West Ham, um, and you just got to make sure that you don't drift too much from that. And I think they're clearly doing a very good job at that. What can they achieve? Um, it's going to be tough for them this season because it's not easy going midweek, weekend, midweek, weekend, midweek, weekend. We won't know. Um, it's hard to manage both. They seem to, I think they've got a draw against AC Milan in their first game, didn't they? Did, yeah. uh, obviously won um, the other day. So what they had to be on four points in the group, clearly. Um, so they, they appear to be managing that. And then the question is, that's a massive high, Gio, a massive high. Um, can they then get on the, get on the coach or the plane or the helicopter, um, fly or swim to London, whatever they're doing. And, um, and then get back up for that game, which is not going to be as big a occasion from playing West Ham as it is playing Paris Saint-Germain at home. With that in mind, what can they achieve? I, I think Newcastle, even though I think they'll find it difficult, and I don't think they've spent the me- they spent lots of money, but not the mega, mega money. They've not signed Jude Bellingham like Real Madrid have. Those clubs are going to find it um tough. I think they're going to get, I think they're going to get to, I'm going to say Newcastle United get to mm, quarterfinals. I think they can get to quarterfinals, possibly even semi-finals actually in the Champions League. And I think they they finish top six in the Premier League. Yeah, I think I think top six in the Premier League. I think it'd be hard to get back into the top four because I'm looking at it now and I think City will be one of them. I think Spurs will be one of them, unfortunately for us. But well, they've got no distractions, Spurs. Yeah, they've got no European football and I'm I'm a bit biased, big fan of Postacoglu. So I think they, they'll be in there. And I think at the minute it would probably be Liverpool and Arsenal. But Fifth might get Champions League this season, so maybe mm. that will give Newcastle the win. But I think I think silverware. I think Carabao Cup, FA Cup, if they can um, be lining those ones up and trying to get at one of them, you know, they put Man City out of the Carabao Cup, didn't they? So that's going to give them a massive yeah. boost, if you like. They've just put their favourites out of the tournament. Mm-hmm. Go if I was sort of Eddie Howe's boss, if I was a man, Dad, we saying, go get that card book. You've just done the hard bit, which is put the favourites out. Now go get it. You got to the final last year. Yeah. I think we played them around the final, didn't we? I think at St. James's, I think we probably benefited from them having that Carabao Cup run, actually, because they were a little bit off it when we played them. And then, obviously, not at the London Stadium when they thrashed us. But <laughs> I just want to say, I think you were bang on what you said about the soul of Newcastle. And I think that's what I admire about how they've done the takeover. That, Like I said, I don't, I don't want to comment on the owners. I don't know enough about it. And you don't have to... I think it's possible to admire the way they've done something at a football club without agreeing at how 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 they do things in their own country. I think it's possible to split the two. This is why I don't understand criticism towards any Newcastle fans or that, which is, oh, well, you look how your club get the money. It's something, they're, they're there to support Newcastle United. That is it. You can do that without supporting what the owners do. It's, it's, it's possible to do both. And I think when I was up there in the summer for... Sam Fender concert, St. James's Park. But when I was there, there was obviously a lot of Newcastle fans. I was speaking to quite a, a lot of them because when they were doing their old uh, Hey Jude song, when they do their Nah, Nah, 
na 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 and then they do the Jordy. We were doing the West Ham, so people around us were like, "Hey, I don't want to know." But they're a lot, all lovely. Had a good chat about football with loads of them. I I just find I like the Newcastle fan base. I, I actually hope they get success. I do. I really do. And like I said, I think they're spending money fantastically well. Like you said, they retain the soul, but also the players they bought have bought into it. You look at Bruno. He looks mm. like a he's, he looks like a Jordy. You know, we speak about Sufan. Oh, shut off, bit shut off, big belly. Pretty much, yeah. He's new, he, new Castle Brown ale. He's yeah. one Newcastle Brown ale away from being a full on Jordy. Yeah, yeah. But we we say when we have players like Canals and Sufal come in, they, they learn about the culture of West Ham. Mm. And I think this when they're signing superstars. I think it can be hard to find the the right character when you're going after when you're limited to so so few players because of their ability. I think finding the right character becomes more difficult. But it looks like they've got it nailed on. And you look at the signing of Anthony Gordon. There was a lot of people, including myself, that wow, that's a lot of money for Anthony Gordon. Is it really, you look at him this season, you think bloody hell. You know they've got like he's got he's stepped up a level now. He's now at Champions League level um, playing. So a lot to admire, admire about Newcastle um, players you admire in particular, though. Um, yeah, I mean, there's plenty. Trippier by a distance would, would be my, my favourite player there. Um, the leadership, um, strong character, strong personality. I think a lot of clubs missed out not getting him, actually. Uh, I think I, I look at, you know, they see these big clubs and they take dips and they, they sort of struggle into fine positions. I just... Well, you look at Man U, wan and Dalot, neither of them have really nailed down that position, have they? And, and, and any of them, any of them, Gio? I look at Liverpool and think, you know, if you could see him going, see, well, you yeah, know, I, I do, I do. I think, you know, Trent Alexander has not been, not been in the team at all when he did. They're trying to find another position for him. Can he sort of play in midfield and all the he's rest of it? He's been injured. When he's fit, he plays. He's been injured. I... You might disagree. I, I, I think, I think Trippier would have been a good fit at Liverpool, and, and not just him. I said, I think any team, any of those team, top teams, uh, even, even when I look at Man City sometimes, and I, I think, you know what, if he's going to start moving Carl Walker, around, I actually thought it last season when it looked like Carl Walker was going to leave, Cancelo had gone, and and there was I watched one game and they're playing four centre backs. I know they do. I just think he could play in any team. I just think he's my uh, of all of them, he's my favourite player. And then I, I like the unsung heroes. I like. Um, I like Almiron. I, I do, and I always have done. As, as you know, I'm so sorry. I don't, that's, that was actually meant to be bloody hell. That's me, old man. I do apologise. It's actually on. Do you see that? I want to prove it. That's on Do Not Disturb. Can you see it? Yeah. No good at all. Um, I I really like... Uh, I like the fact that he still uses Callum Wilson. I, I like that. And he looks a threat. And, and, it, and it, I think it just... And I love Eddie Howe. It shows the loyalty of Eddie Howe that he continues to use him. Um, and that... You know, he, he had him at Bournemouth and he, he turned up there. So I think he's really, really good. Isak, every time I look at him, it, it, it find, I find him quite terrifying, actually. And I think, oh, my goodness, you know, I, I know you said at the time, oh, you'd have loved him at West Ham. He would have done really, really well at West Ham. But, you know, look, Newcastle becoming one of those clubs you could, I could carry on five or six more players. But, yeah, a, a Trippier in particular, I, I do look at him, I admire him. Yeah, Isaac's the one that I absolutely love. I'm biased. I've liked him for years now. And when he went to Newcastle, ugh, did they have to go get him? But he's just incredible. I mean, like you said, he's actually found it difficult to get into the team at times because of the form of Callum Wilson. But I do think he's an exceptional talent. I think Bruno, to see him sign a new contract at Newcastle, is fantastic for the club. Granted, a £100 million release clause in there. But first of all, Someone's got to pay 100 million to get him. Mm. Second of all, it doesn't mean he'll go just because a club will come along and activate it. Bruno might turn around and say, Actually, I'm fine with it. I, yeah, don't yeah. Want, I don't wish to leave. Thank you very much. A lot being made of Tonali, a, a player I've never really seen. I don't watch Italian football. I've not seen him play, but heard of him kind of thing. But he was classy against PSG. He's such a classy player. Just the way he moves the ball around, the way that he moves around the pitch as well. And you can see why. Eddie Howe's brought him in. I can only echo your sentiments about Kevin Shapiro. And I think Botman's one of the best centre backs in the league. Obviously missing mm. at the minute, which is good for us. But just good, good quality all over the pitch. And they've still got Jacob Murphy coming off the bench as well. Uh, which, but that's the thing about Eddie Howe. He's improved every single player, yeah. bar bar Ryan Fraser. Um, I think pretty much every player has improved. On I think he was just getting his own back on that because Fraser let him down at Bournemouth. <laughs> I think right, I'll get you. I'll get you now. 
Yeah, he doesn't forget. Eddie, no, he's not does totally he? nice. He's ninety nine percent nice. Yeah. When he first yeah. came in, he used Fraser, didn't he? Came back mm-hmm. and put Fraser straight back in the team. It was like a case of now I've got my my players. You're back out. The used team. and then abused. Gee, yeah, that's what he did. Um, Anyway, let's talk about West Ham then. Team news. Um, Anna Creswell and Ben Johnson are unlikely to feature in this game as both missed a trip to Germany over the week. And Mikhail Antonio also missed it. And there's a major doubt for West Ham this weekend. So with all that in mind, Gonzo, I think the team picks itself. 100% picks itself. So would you like to talk us through your team then for any Newcastle fans tuning in or any West Ham fans that are interested, although it might be a bit obvious what we're waiting to suggest. This is the team we think, usually we say this is the Both. team we think we want to see, but Moyes won't do. But actually, I think it might be the team that I want to see, Gonzo wants to see, and what we will see from David Moyes on Sunday. So Gonzo, in goal. Yeah, myself, uh, Gio, and David Moyes are aligned uh, this this week. We've had our, we've had our, our Zoom call, um, so we 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 would all like Ariola in goal, um, and we would all like, I'm sure, Su, um, Sufal at right back, uh, Kurt Zuma and Nathan Gerd, and uh, obviously Emerson at left back. Completely agree. Moving into midfield, Edson Alvarez in defensive midfield with Roy Paris and Thomas Suchak. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a tough, brutish midfield, isn't it? And then the front three of Paquetta on the left, and then take your pick, but could do some bowling, fill in the other two spots. That's it. There you go. It's done. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like <laughs> yeah, right. Right. We're off. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Newcastle. welcome to Newcastle chat. Yeah. Uh, right. Welcome to Newcastle United fan TV. Drop a dip. Please do drop a like. Um, that's, how, that's how I think West Ham was saying. Do you know what? I'm looking forward to it, actually. I think. We've seen the Caduce and Bowen thing against Freiburg. And was it perfect? No. But I do think there's a lot of promises there, actually. And I already prefer to the alternative of Danny Ings up front. I was a bit concerned against Freiburg. We were going to see Ings just put in the Mikel Antonio role in this case of that's it. But I was pleasantly surprised that he went with Bowen and Caduce, actually. Um, part of me thinks he shouldn't because... I do feel Moyes has spoken about Caduce differently. Moyes has said Caduce is ready. He's had his pre-season. I know a bit about him. He's ready. Whereas last season, about the new signings, there was, oh, they're getting used to the penalty. league. They need to settle in. There was all these things coming out. He's not said that about Caduce, which is different. But he's also then, first of all, he's spoken to Stephen Pienaar, who's at Ajax. And second, and more importantly, how do you say his name, by the way? Is it Hittinga Hitting, or Heitinga? Oh, uh, John, uh, uh, Heitinga. 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 Yes. More importantly, he's got Heitinger as his coaching staff, who was the interim manager at Ajax yeah, yeah. last season and had Caduce playing really well. So he's got someone there that knows how to get the best out of Caduce. So I was always hopeful that it would be a bit different for a Caduce. And I feel like I've got that reassurance last night, actually. Was Caduce excellent against Faberg? No. But he certainly wasn't bad. I think it was promising, is what you could call it. Um who would you prefer to see up front, Bowen or Caduce? Do you have a preference, or do you want to see them switching like they were? Switching, switching's fine. Let's let's, let's work it out. I, I do like to see some form of uh, foot movement. Just it just I just think it keeps the opposition guessing, um, and it just stops the opposition saying, right, left back, you're picking up him. Left centre back, you're picking up him. You want to cause a bit of confusion, so they're saying, you know, Gaffer, where am I going here? What more am I doing? So yeah, let let them swap, let them roam. Yeah, I think that's going to be our key focus because, like, nothing against Dan Byrne, nothing against him. Delighted for him. Jordy Boy went back in the relegation battle and I think he was almost demanding to get out of Brighton because he wanted to go back, play for his boyhood club and try and get him out of the relegation battle. But I do feel that's where, or that's who we should be attacking um, on Sunday afternoon. Caduce are bowing up against Dan Byrne down that side. And Newcastle will allow us to go one-on-one. Was, they will press us and match us and say, come on then, what you got? And I think that's the side we want to get get down. Because the greatest respect, we've got nothing down the left-hand side at the minute. Even if Paquetta plays out there, he's not, Paquetta's not going to be skinning Kieran Chip here. Paquetta <laughs> will go wandering. He'll be coming in field and picking the ball up. So any joy we get... It's going to come down that side. So I think it's important we get the bowling and Caduce thing right. What that is, I don't know. But I do feel it's important that we take advantage. That's a bit harsh, but cause Dan Burn burn bother down that side, if you like. If Antonio's fit, would you change anything or would you stick with what we want to see? Well, if Antonio was 100% fit, um, I'd probably play Antonio up front, yeah. And then bench Caduce. Yeah. Yeah, if, if Antonio was 100%, I mean, you know, if I look, if I was looking at him thinking, right, he's going to be in total beast mode here, 
yeah, because I, I, I do look at the bench and think we've got nothing to come off the bench of any potency. But it's fun. even though you look at it and it will say, oh, look, it's an experienced bench, but I am not. I wouldn't look at that bench and think I'm itching for anyone to come on. Whereas I think if Caduce is on the bench or Antonio was on the bench, I'll be itching for one of them to come on because I think either one could cause big damage against them. But yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. It depends on how fit he is, but I don't think he can be 100% fit. Do you know what I mean? I feel like if he's available, he's not quite... Mm. A hundred percent. Um, with the international bit coming up, I think Moyes might gamble a little bit as well and think, well, that's all right. If you get injured, it's not us that lose out in the next couple of weeks, it's Jamaica that misses out, and uh, not West Ham. Do you think this is? I think a lot of us have had this feeling for a couple of weeks now, which is you know, Sheffield United coming up, we should win, but after that, Faberg away, Newcastle at home, and then after the international bit, got Aston Villa away. Is this the big sort of test for West Ham to just to see where we're at this season? I would argue this is one of the pivotal games in the season and I thought it about, as we spoke about this before, I think about the Freiburg and Newcastle. I've, I've been looking at these thinking, right, OK, so we've gone top, you know, top in our group, six points from um, two games in our, in our European group. So that, that was, and that's our best team in, in our group, Freiburg. So we've gone away to Germany, no fans, big, big test, we did it. And now we're neck and neck, us and Newcastle in the league. If we can it's not even about denting them, all right? Because ultimately, ultimately, I'm not sure whether us two clubs are going to be contested, but it's, it's about three points for us. What it would mean is we go into the international break on, on the on the back of a really good victory, probably in the top six, and looking back thinking, well, that's a pretty damn good start to the season. We've only lost to Man City and Liverpool. And I think we can really, really push on from them. We can come back, I think. And, and I, I have said it, and, and I'm not, you know, I think sometimes, you know, you can be too cautious and, and not say things and for whatever superstitious reasons or whatever it is. I look at that European group. I think we've got that. We've got that wrapped up. We're, we're going to win that group now. Um, and uh, and I just think, oh, hold on, if we can get this, if we can beat Newcastle, these two games, we're in for a big season, attacking everything on all fronts. I think the Villa game is still one of the ones for me. Three tests for me. We passed the first one, Freiburg. This is the next one. Then the next one's Villa. And I think if we can get three points against Newcastle and Villa, if we get three points, I think that's a good return. And that would get get me optimistic because these are... I, we've just done Newcastle. We both think we're going to they're going to finish in top six, regardless of what happens on Sunday. We think Newcastle yeah. finished top six in the Premier League. That's how highly we rate them. So we... And Villa, we think I am. I'm just assuming you're going to agree with me here. They'll be thereabouts alongside they'll be, us. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be a top eight, seventh, eight, eight, eight ninth. Yeah, yeah they'll, they'll yeah. be in there, and we'll be in there possibly as well. So we can get three points out against two sides that are at the top of the table. Well, surely then we've got to be in that conversation as well, which is top half, but potentially nicking a European spot too. And this is a big test because so far every win has always come with the mitigation now sometimes we apply it ourselves guns and i remember doing it that 2020-21 season when we finished six because we refused to believe and we did because we just the season before was a relegation battle so we were expecting it to go wrong even that i remember in top four in january and we we're like hey we're still not going to get european football you know there wasn't two thirds way through the season we were still expecting so are you, are you talking about last season at upton park no. yeah yeah, no, 2021, David Moyes' season. Oh, sorry, yeah, of course, yeah. When we finished six, yeah. we were still yeah. expecting it to go wrong. But we kept applying mitigation to all the win. Oh, we've won, but that player was injured. Oh, we've won, but that happened. Yeah. And I feel like we're doing that this season. Yeah. We beat Brighton. I've seen people say, well, they got beat 6-1 by Villa. So is it was it really that good? It was a really good result. Mm. It doesn't matter what they've done after. They'll still finish in top half of Penny League. The Zerbi's still one of the best coaches in the league. Just because they got thumped by Villa doesn't take anything away from it. You know, we beat Sheffield United, yeah, but the the worst team there yeah, they are. Same with the Chelsea game, same yeah, with last every, night's game as well. Every win, every win's yeah. got this like disclaimer. And I've got a feeling if we beat Newcastle, be, I, I can already see it. Well, they didn't have Botman, Wilson, Anthony Gordon was suspended. Yola team, oh, they were missing four players. On, on, a, on, on a high, on a, on yeah, a, on a so, high from PSG. So yeah, the mitigation yeah. will come. And, and listen, we are guilty. Mean Gons are guilty of it as well. I'm not saying we don't, we were doing it, but I feel like I've stopped doing it now because actually, I, th- I just think we're a good team this season. And I think if we can get something against Sunday, it just proves it a little bit for me, which is 
there's no mitigation for you. You can add the injuries and stuff, but those players that are missing, bar Anthony Gordon, were missing on Wednesday when they just stuck forward past PSG. That's the yeah. team we're going to play with on Sunday. Um, so I think this is a brilliant test for us. I think it'll give us a really good barometer as to how good we are this season. Obviously, if we get beat, then that's where we go back to the John Burr and think maybe we're not quite as good as we thought. Well, I'll be thinking that. Are you confident for this one? Yeah. yeah are I'm you? Very, I'm very confident for this, yeah, I've got to say. Ooh. Yeah, I think we're a good team this season. And you're absolutely, I totally agree with everything you said. And, and I'm sick of making excuses for us winning as well. And, um, you know, and, and there was a whole load of them that came after last night. Um, but actually, it was the other way around. Actually, it wasn't, we didn't win because all this was going for us. It was all against us. We had no fans in this stadium. The pitch was horrible. It was away. Um, you, you know, we, we, we were without our best defender. We were without our only striker. You know what I mean? It, it's easy. It's easy to make excuses one way, but not the other. So, um, I, I for this game as well, I think what's done us a really big favour is the kickoff time of the away the away thing that allows us. I don't I, have, I don't know what time the plane was chartered. I couldn't tell you anything about it, but I do know if you're in Europe and you're in Germany and your match finishes at quarter to ten at night. You're probably not getting landed. Yeah, I, I'm not sure you're getting into your bed before four or five in the morning. I think that can be the debilitating, you know, if you're flying back. I think when your match finishes a smidgen before eight o'clock, I think you might be in your bed at sort of one o'clock in the morning or something like whatever. I think you get back. And, and I think so. Um, yeah, I, I think we won't be as fatigued as we might have been um, from our other European games. So, yeah, the. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm quite happy about that. I, I think as long as they got their fitness right, their preparation right, and they've all had a cheeky ice bath or whatever they do, I, I'm, I think we'll, we'll be fit and I think we'll be very, very up for it. And I don't think we're coming off the elation that Newcastle are probably coming off there. I, I think ours was a ours was a business-like... Ours wasn't an event. Newcastle had an event. Ours was an event. And we just... This is our third season in Europe, Gio. We, we, we rocked up and we do what we do, which is finish top of the group. I know we're not finished top of the group yet. I'm back there. We've gone to Germany. We've got the job done. We made our substitutions. We rested players. We're back. And But the owners within the club will not will, will, have, will have been on, on the Premier League. Um you know, and, and Eddie Howe, Eddie Howe would have done all that. Eddie Howe would have said, look, right, forget about that and move on. And he would have said all the right things and all the training will be right and everything they'll do will have been right. But it was still a, a mega, mega occasion. Um, you know, up at St. James's Park, a mega, mega occasion. And it actually reminded me of they played Barcelona um, some years back. Uh, they have a player called Faustino Asprilla who was, um, well, he was a magnificent player. He, <laughs> I remember back Faustino Asprilla stopped them winning the Premier League. <laughs> Kevin Keegan went and bought this player midway through the season and he didn't need to. And it changed the dynamic of the team. And I think they would have won the league that season. But he was a very good player, very one of the most skillful players uh, most of us have seen. Um, they had a remarkable encounter against Barcelona and it was just a massive high. And the PSG thing reminded me of that. Maybe I'm clinging on to false hope, but I, I think we well, may be slightly more focused for this it's... one. Oh, we our, our headline today for West Ham is we've made history in European football, 17 games. And that's what it is. It's not that we beat Faber, it's that mm. we've gone 17 games unbeaten. It's like a long-term achievement. That's what we're celebrating today more than the win itself. Yeah. Whereas with Newcastle, it's impossible to avoid it. They probably went to train the next day and there's probably more reporters outside that training ground than ever before. You know, yeah. the fans are on a high, understandably. Yeah. They're, they're being treated like the heroes of the Northeast. Again, understandably so, but it's still going on, like you said. And our lot come back and have a Macadese. You know, Alex Aswell and Declan Rice were saying, you know, after the European Games, they'd fly back into London and they'd have a Macadese at three in the morning and they'd all get in each other's rooms and chat and have a McDonald's. Oh. Um, so that's how, they, that's how we celebrate a European win. All right. Chicken <laughs> McNuggets. Uh... Well, there's probably nothing else open at 3 a.m. in the morning, is there? So there's options no. are probably limited. Um, I'm not confident, Gonzo, but that's just because I rate Newcastle that highly. I think it's a very good, very big, I say big game. I think it's a big test for us. And mm. I think they are a wonderful side. They've got a fantastic coach. They know what they're doing. I think this is our... Barman City in Liverpool, obviously, but I actually think this game's tougher than them for, in, in a really weird way, in the sense that they don't carry that heavyweight title yet, Newcastle. Mm. With with City and Liverpool, it's like, oh, you know, West Ham won't win, but th that's not there this weekend. It, it feels like it's like a fair fight to some extent, but I, I think Newcastle are a damn good side and they're going to make it difficult for us. And to be honest with you, I can't forget them battering us at the London Stadium last season. I know it's 
a while ago now, but it's not that far away. Long what, no. five months ago, something six months ago, like that, and three months of that was no football. Um, they 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 destroyed us. That was the best team that beat us. We we lost a lot of games last season. We lost twenty games in the Premier League <laughs> last did, season, but that one from Newcastle yeah. and the one against Brighton, that two were the ones that really upset me. Actually, um, that really it really triggered something in me. How frustrated and how bad we were but also how good the other side were um anyway phil that's in don can i get any final words from yourself and your all-important score prediction please gonzo i'm uh, just looking forward to it mate you know really looking forward to it uh yeah i, I, I think i, I feel I, I feel it's a pivotal moment i do i feel it's a pivotal moment in our season uh i think david moyes will be wounded by that that thump in last season in the same way that he was clearly wounded um against uh with the brighton result as well which is uh which he rectified and and he got his he got his revenge on that one. So I'm I'm feeling a I'm feeling a similar dollop of revenge on this one. And and I think you know a lot of the players involved will be as well. And, and I think um I think it'd be a tight game, but I think we we went out of, on two one. And um, well, Eddie Howe got his revenge on Ryan Fraser. David Moyes got his revenge on Bryson, but I'm not sure who's going to get his revenge on Newcastle. <laughs> I'm I'm going to say two two actually. I think there's goals in this one. I think both sides are more than capable. They're obviously missing. Botman at the back as well, which is a, a big help for us, actually. I do, I do think he's... A, I think the South is fantastic against PSG. But I do think Botman is just a cut above yeah, most centre-backs in the Premier League. Um, be interested to see how we approach this as well, actually, because I think PSG kind of gave a little bit of a blueprint on how to deal with them. They just got it wrong, but the scoreline, I think, might have put people off trying it. So... Yeah, two good sides going at it on Sunday. I'll be happy. I'll probably be happy with a draw, but I think it depends on the context of the game and how it plays out and what positives there are to take from it. But I'll be honest with you. If we win 1-0 and we have one shot on target all game, I'll be buzzing. I, oh, I yeah. could not care. Getting into that international break, like you said, possibly in top six, lost two games all season. That was Newcastle Liverpool beating Newcastle be superb but if you've enjoyed this preview please do drop a like on it by clicking thumbs up subscribing to hammer's chat myself and gonzo catching a bit